We were the first state to pass the bottle bill, the first state to decriminalize marijuana, the first state to vote entirely by mail. We've been a leader for a lot of progressive causes, except for one, non-unanimous jury convictions. Because Oregon was the last state in the country to get rid of them. And that's only because of a U.S. Supreme Court ruling from last year. You might remember this. If you haven't heard of it, you're probably going to go, really? Uh, okay. Oregon allowed people to be convicted of a crime, even if everyone on the jury didn't agree about it. As long as 10 out of 12 jurors decided you were guilty, then you could be legally convicted of that crime. Well, last April, the Supreme Court put a stop to that. And again, Oregon was the only state in the country left with this law. So it really only applied to us. So now, no one in Oregon can be convicted by one of these non-unanimous juries. But what about everyone in prison right now? People who were put there by a split jury? Do their convictions get thrown out? Well, that's a pretty good question, right? And one the Supreme Court also took up this week. They ruled that last year's decision on non-unanimous juries isn't retroactive. And what that means is, is that anyone in prison on one of these non-unanimous convictions is staying there in prison, at least for now. They're letting the states instead decide if they want to throw out all of those old cases. And people can still appeal their convictions, too, but it's going to be up to the states. I talked to Lewis and Clark Law Professor Elisa Kaplan about all of this. She's the director of the Criminal Justice Reform Clinic, which has advocated for people sentenced by non-unanimous juries. Can you tell me how many people are in prison in Oregon and were put there because of non-unanimous juries? And I cannot give you an exact number because for more than the 85 years that we had non-unanimous juries here in Oregon, we had no mechanism to count them or to ensure that we even knew if people had non-unanimous juries. Um, the only way we know if people had non-unanimous juries over the years is if their lawyer or for some reason the judge asked for the jury to be polled and then put it on the record or wrote it in a, um, in a, you know, on the verdict sheet. And so there are tons of people likely that were imprisoned in Oregon that had a non-unanimous jury and they didn't even know. Um, where we are right now is there are somewhere between 220 and about 300 people who have filed claims saying they have proof that they had a non-unanimous jury. And, it, and the majority of those people are in prison. The attorney general is in a position in all these cases to either stipulate to retroactivity in all these cases, or she could just not fight the arguments. Um, she could stand down um, and allow the cases to proceed and let the courts figure it out and let them figure it out quicker. This is not a get out of prison free uh, you know, ask, this is all I want is a fair trial and I want to go back to the beginning. Now, she mentioned the attorney general there, Ellen Rosenblum. She hasn't been exactly a fan of this whole unconstitutional ruling. In fact, last year, she asked the Supreme Court to keep the non-unanimous jury law the way it was. But this week, she did release a statement saying, my office remains committed to reviewing every case presented to us that involves a request for a new trial. We are carefully reviewing the Edwards decision, and we will be working expeditiously on a plan for addressing these cases going forward. She also said the legislature could pass a law to fix this whole thing and throw out all of those non-unanimous convictions. So that is an option moving forward. Also, a third option is for the state Supreme Court to rule that those cases need to be thrown out and get new trials.